don't belong here. An anonymous trip report. Dose, 300 milligrams Robitussin gel caps and 300 milligrams of Delsum Orange DXM Polystyrex. Year 2018. At this point in my life, I was renting a room out of a stranger's house because I couldn't afford the rent for my college dorm any longer. They remorselessly encouraged me to pack my things and evacuate campus, so I scrambled for a cheap room to rent. I had put an ad out on Craigslist saying that I am quiet, friendly, and responsible. I said nothing of my DXM adventures, and I sort of forgot about it, as I was putting off this whole moving out thing. A couple days later, I actually got a direct email from this guy, Alberto. I went to see the house and I immediately fell in love with it. It was in a very bad neighborhood, Saginaw, Michigan, but it was a wonderful little house. It was painted bright shades of blue and green with a bright yellow door. The inside had fake stained glass window stickers beautiful rugs all over the house, and tons of incredible art. Alberto was an overtly gay man, and he was a good landlord slash roommate. The house was absolutely perfect. In fact, I loved it so much that I remember thinking I had dreams about it in the past. Not to mention, it was the only room I could afford. Anyway, Alberto's drug of choice besides the Marlboro Ice Menthols, was something he called Poppers. He said they sold them at the local strip club and that they were really popular with the gay community because it makes gay sex a lot easier and more enjoyable. But he did do DXM once. He told me, back in high school, he tripped on it at a party. He got in the pool and it felt like he was in a big bowl of jello. Well, I told him I was going to trip in the house that night. The house had such an eerie vibe. I wondered often if it was haunted, and I basically ended up just not paying any rent for months and never saying anything about it, totally pretending like nothing was wrong with me lounging around smoking pot all day. But tonight was different. I was robo-tripping. I grabbed some decks from the store. They only had one bottle of gel caps, so I picked up a bottle of DXM Poly syrup as well. I rode the bus out to Walmart and back home to Alberto's. Now, at this point, it was the dead of winter, and Alberto's friends came over more often to drink wine and smoke weed, so there was almost always something to do there. Well, I became friends with one of Alberto's friends, Dandelion, and I had this idea I came upon once when I was tripping. They say that the clothes make the man, I said to Dandy. So then, if I have different clothes, am I a different person? Interesting hypothesis, he responded. We should try it out. So for a whole month, we traded our entire wardrobes. Usually, I wore all black. Black pants, jacket, and these weird black shirts that I had bleached out on an extreme DXM dose. That was my whole wardrobe, whereas now I am wearing skinny red pants and a striped red and white button-down shirt. I did feel pretty different. I was sitting on the bus waiting to get home. The bus must have forgot to change the clock for daylight savings because the clock was an hour off. I took the DXM as soon as I got home, used the Delsum to wash down the gel caps. Alberto had this machine that was like one of those laser projectors, where it shoots out red and green lasers, like at bars or raves, but it had a mode where it flashed to music, and it flashed to the TV, too, when characters were talking. So I had all the lights off, wrapped up in blankets, watching TV with this flashing laser projector responding to the TV audio.
I watched many old episodes of Twilight Zone. A lot of the old episodes that I remembered seeing here and there throughout my life all sort of blended together in a weird way. Alberto had a huge collection of tapes and DVDs, but one of his favorite parts of the collection were his Haunted Saginaw DVDs. Haunted Saginaw was this local series done by some rapper named Prozac. It is basically like taps for local Saginaw buildings, so I start watching those. I'm watching one about the local theater. First of all, the DVD menu was so eerie. It was this twisted music showing the red neon theater sign in the dead of night. The movie was pretty lame, as ghost investigations often are, but on DXM I was getting sucked into it. At first it was normal, orbs, or a distant sound being recorded, or a whisper, usual ghost show stuff. But then it got really terrifying. It seems this team was so desperate to prove there was something after death. They were begging these, quote, spirits to show themselves, only to be met with silence. I was tripping really hard now, and feeling uneasy. I realized Alberto was still in the room, watching with me. This is so scary, man, is all I could say. As the movie went on, they went into some underground tunnels beneath the theater. Nobody was supposed to be down there for a long time. Then, there was this shot. One of the investigators illuminated by the sickly green night vision. And as he spoke, the laser machine flashed onto the ceiling above me. I know you can hear me, he said to the ghost. I'm talking to you. He looked into the camera his night vision glowing eyes, looking deep into my own dexed out eyes. I was tripping so hard, and I was so existentially shaken, that I knew he was talking directly to me. I know you can hear me, wherever you are, whoever you are. What are you doing here, he said, looking right into me. You don't belong here. I felt like I was having a heart attack. I grabbed my chest and I couldn't feel it beating. You need to leave. Get out, he shouted. Get out of here. You don't belong here. Shortly after, the movie ended and popped back to the DVD screen. I stood up immediately, hearing the sick music start to play. I was dressed in red stripes, with this red, flashing neon sign on the screen, and the lasers pulsing alongside the music. I turned to Alberto and said, Holy shit, man. That seriously scared the crap out of me. I ran outside and threw up. I no longer knew what was real or what was fake. But I knew I didn't belong here. A couple weeks later, Alberto finally kicked me out of the house. And it burned down about a week after that. 1012 McCoskery Street is now a blank, empty plot of land.